A Macon man is dead after a police officer shot him multiple times in front of the Kroger on Pinona Avenue. That's according to Bibb County Coroner Leon Jones. And 41 NBC's Amanda Castro is live on the scene trying to piece together the information for us. Amanda? Hey, Andrew. Okay, so right now, this Kroger of Pinona is completely cleared, but just over an hour ago, there were police filling up this parking lot. Police crime tape was up. Um, that's because 49-year-old Sammy Davis Jr. was pronounced dead around 40, 440 this afternoon of multiple gunshot wounds. That's according to County Coroner Leon Jones. We do have unconfirmed reports from a witness who says a Macon police officer shot him four times. The witness also told us that the man is well known in this area and he often asks for spare change from people who walk into the store. It's not clear whether police wanted to arrest Davis, but they were serving a search arrest warrant before shots were rang out. What we know is that a Precinct 3 patrol officer attempted to serve a warrant. A struggle ensued, shots were fired, and we're investigating. So if they were going to shoot him, they just should have shot him in the leg. Why shoot him four times? That don't make no sense. I don't like that. We are working to find out what exactly happened. Again, there's not very much information. Police are trying to piece what to get what happened so we'll keep you updated as soon as we have more information on 41 nbc and at 41 nbc.com reporting live in macon amanda castro for 41 nbc news more about the message from the family of Sammy Junebug Davis Jr. Shanti. Well, it's not just coming from the family, but other members of the community who are angry at how the city's police department operates. This right here is a disciplinary file for Officer Clayton Sutton, the man who shot Sammy Junebug Davis, and in it are 26 complaints compiled during Sutton's six-and-a-half-year career. Now, police have yet to explain what took place at the Kroger on Pionona Avenue, but people I spoke to at the rally today say Sutton should have been thrown off the force a long time ago. He needs to go to prison. They need to lock him up this afternoon. They, they, they are, they're a week late in doing it, but Clayton Sutton, you need to be, you need to go to jail. You need to be punished for what you did to my brother. Cheryl Davis says her brother Junebug was as meek as a lamb. He would never hurt anyone, let alone pose a threat to a Macon police officer. That's why it's hard for her and others at a rally outside City Hall to understand why the man who was found unarmed was shot multiple times in the chest. I dare you to find someone to say something bad about Junebug. I dare you to find someone. Police first said Sutton was serving a warrant on Davis, but they backtracked after no warrant was found and have offered no other explanation. It's a practice community activist Anthony Harris says has become routine. This investigation shouldn't take this long. The, the, the police department is letting the media discover things. A copy of Officer Sutton's disciplinary record shows allegations of harassment, theft, excessive force, reckless driving, and animal abuse. Harris says if Sutton is found to be in the wrong, it shouldn't just be the officer to blame, but police administrators and even city officials. Our so-called community leaders and politicians don't have the guts to step out because they're afraid they might not get votes, they might not get their pockets lined, or whatever. Exactly what happened still remains a mystery. 
Police initially said there was a struggle and multiple shots were fired, and the incident report says Sutton had blood on his neck. But while the investigation is ongoing, people at the rally have already made up their minds. Officer Clayton Sutton, I want you fired and put in prison. There's a problem with the leadership that we keep somebody like that who's sworn to protect us out here who ultimately caused somebody's death, an innocent person's death. Now, the police department has been given every opportunity to respond to the story. Emails and voicemail messages have gone unreturned. And interestingly enough, this isn't the first time WGXA has reported on Officer Sutton's alleged misdeeds. Over the summer, he was accused of hitting a Macon woman and her grandchild with his police cruiser. That incident was not listed in Sutton's disciplinary report. Reporting live in the studio, Shanti Tager, WGXA. Who shot him? We've told you about Officer Clayton Sutton's discipline record, about criticism of how police handled the crime, and how Macon City Council members say they're hearing more complaints about Sutton. Macon Police and the GBI are investigating the shooting and won't comment further on the case. Today, 13 WMAZ's Jennifer Moulet asked how police departments react when complaints are filed repeatedly against an individual officer. She'll have more on that in just a moment. First, though, Tom George spoke to a Macon man who says his brush with Officer Sutton this summer literally left its mark on him. Tom. That's right. I spoke with Adam Solomon, a 64-year-old Macon man. He says back in July he called police when unwanted guests in his house would not leave, but instead Officer Clayton Sutton arrested him. He says after Sutton arrived with two other officers, Sutton told the other officers they could go and said, quote, I'll take care of it. Solomon says Sutton then dragged him outside his home and roughed him up. He snatched me out. Slam me on the trunk of his car. He said, shut your mouth, I'll kick your ass. And uh, so he twisted my arm up my back. I said, oh, you gonna break my arm. So he put the handcuffs on me so tight, bust a blood vessel in both of my wrists. Now, we found the Macon Police incident report on the case. It says Solomon was arrested and charged with public intoxication. His friend and neighbor Gloria Savage says that was an exaggeration. She says Solomon was drinking but was not intoxicated. Savage is the wife of a minister and says she witnessed most of the exchange between Sutton and Solomon. She would not speak to us on camera but backs up Solomon's story and says the police officer went on the offensive. Solomon says police dropped the charge, but police spokeswoman Jamie Godet would not confirm that or comment further. Since then, though, he says he's had multiple medical visits because of his injured hand. And I've been back and forth to the hospital, medical center. I've been to Coliseum. Coliseum give me this uh, wristband right here. I got another wristband upstairs. Last month, he heard about the Kroger shooting and realized it was the same officer. Solomon says he attended Junebug's funeral Saturday to show support. He says after what happened to both him and Davis, he's concerned that Sutton is still on the job. You know, he's just a beast, man. And I, I don't think he should need to be on the police force. They need to take that gun and badge away from him and lock him up. on Churchill Street. According to police spokesperson Jamie Godet, the officer was arresting two teenagers for possession of marijuana when the alleged accident occurred. 41 NBC's Jasmine Williams spoke with the victim, who says someone needs to be held accountable. It's tonight's top story. Mary Mike says what started out as a small police chase ended up in chaos. The 53-year-old was at her home Saturday afternoon when she overheard an argument between a Macon police officer and a neighborhood team. Mike was going outside to calm everyone down when she ended up on the wrong end of the investigation. Man, hear me, I die. So when I turned my eye off here instead of walking, you can hear him hit the gas. She doesn't remember much after that other than waking up on the ground. According to Mike, the officer backed into her while she was carrying her three-year-old granddaughter. Mike's son drove her to the hospital where she was treated for bruises on her hip and back. 
Her granddaughter has a swollen ankle. I don't know. He, he, you know, he hit me in my, in my side. MPD is not releasing a whole lot of information about the officer, other than to say that Internal Affairs is investigating. But Mike says she's seen the officer's face before. I sit right here where I'm sitting at every day, and I see him ride up and down the street. During our interview, a Macon police cruiser passed by Mike's home. She said that's the same officer that hit her. We couldn't confirm that, and when I approached the officer, he wouldn't comment on the incident. According to Macon Police, investigators found no damage on the police car, indicating the vehicle struck anyone. Probably why didn't appear that he hit anybody. He hit a body. Mike says she hasn't heard from MPD, Internal Affairs, or the officer since Saturday's incident. She says not even a simple apology. In Macon, Jasmine Williams for 41 NBC News. 41 NBC reached out to the Macon Police Department and Internal Affairs. Our calls were not returned. We're still working to bring you updates on this incident. But many questions still remain about the woman who claims Officer Sutton hit her with his patrol car. It's a story we're following very closely here at 41 NBC. We first told you about Mary Mike back in September. Mike was at the protest today and is calling for an in-depth investigation into Sutton's records. 41 NBC obtained a copy of the police report Sutton wrote the day Mike was hit. In his narrative, it reads, quote, I saw an older black lady wearing a brown shirt and blue jeans with blonde hair walk into the back of my patrol car. And then she began yelling at me that I hit her. I talked with City Councilman Virgil Watkins about her case, and he said he will begin to look into the incident. Mike is also seeking legal representation in regards to the September incident. The man fatally shot by a Macon police officer was laid to rest Saturday. Sammy Davis Jr.'s family and the community came together to celebrate his life and say their final goodbyes. And some are still demanding justice. 41 NBC's Amanda Castro has more. It was a gray and chilly Saturday afternoon, but the weather didn't stop dozens of people from gathering in the chapel of Bentley and Sons Funeral Home to say goodbye to Sammy Davis Jr. We grew up together and never known him to bother anyone. He just was a kind, loving person, never harmed a hell on anyone head. He was a very sweet man. Everyone in the Bellevue community and around knew him and loved him. And you could see that love in the large number of family, friends, and complete strangers who came to pay their final respects to the man known as Junebug. Serving was wonderful. Just a nice home going. This service was a beautiful homecoming. An angel just got his wings. It's a sad day for Davis's family and the community, but many are grateful for the chance to remember June Bug and say their final goodbyes. And as he's laid to rest, the community is coming together, demanding answers and justice. There's just no excuse for what has happened. Just to let us know that, you know, he's at peace with God. You know, and God don't make no mistake, but I really, myself, would like to see justice done. I really do. In Macon, Amanda Castro, 41, NBC News. The Macon Police Department is conducting an internal investigation into what happened leading up to that shooting. Officer Clayton Sutton, the man who killed Davis, is currently on paid administrative leave. We're following the story very closely, and we will keep you updated as more updates become available. The Macon police officer accused of fatally shooting a man outside of Kroger has been disciplined for, excep for excessive force before. According to police files, Officer Clayton Sutton has been reprimanded more than a dozen times in the past four years, and now Sammy Davis's family wants him off the street. 41 NBC's Jasmine Williams has been following this story, and she joins us in the studio with details. That's right. We first told you about Mary Mike back in September. Mike claimed she was injured when she was struck by a police cruiser. She said the officer was Officer Sutton, and she believes he was the driver. Sutton is the same officer who shot Sammy Davis outside of Kroger.
Cheryl Davis has read through these four pages and dozen reprimands several times as she tries to learn more about the Macon police officer who shot and killed her brother. I don't even understand how, why this man is still walking around here today. Officer Clayton Sutton fatally shot Sammy Davis outside of Kroger. According to police reports, Sammy was unarmed. He's to be arrested the way anybody else would if they had taken someone's life. It's the same thing Mary Mike has been asking for months. We first told you about Mike in September. She claimed she was struck by a police cruiser and Officer Sutton was behind the wheel. The one that hit me intentionally. Mike plans to file suit but hasn't received a police report. 41 NBC requested a copy of the report and was told there was not one available. A private investigator is now looking into her case. She believes if Sutton was properly disciplined the first time, all of this could have been prevented. That would have never happened to this lady brother. She would have had her brother here to today. In an attempt to make sure this doesn't happen again, the community is coming together. It's, it's, it's going to have to be some justice done. This is going to have to stop. So many people love Jumbo, and I'm so glad that people are speaking up for him. Now the protest is planned for this Friday at 1 p.m. outside of City Hall. We obtained some police files that say that Officer Sutton was reprimanded in July of 2010 after he used excessive force while pulling a woman for her vehicle. Another man is filing a lawsuit against the officer for a previous incident. 41 NBC reached out to Melanie Hoffman about the incident and we have not heard back. We also reached out to Internal Affairs and they have not returned our calls. At a Macon Kroger last Friday. Tom George has new information and joins us now in the 13 WMAZ Eyewitness Newsroom. Tom. Frank, I have here the full disciplinary history of Officer Clayton Sutton starting when he first joined the force back in 2006. 13 WMAZ got his file in an open records request to Megan Police. According to the records, Friday's shooting wasn't the first time Sutton was accused of excessive force. Back in 2010, Sutton got a written reprimand for allegedly using excessive force during an arrest. Shamiria Sears said Sutton pulled her from her car and threw her on the ground. She also said Sutton was rude and used profanity towards her. And last year, the records show Sutton was suspended for a day after allegedly harassing a Bibb County woman about a bad check. The woman said Sutton, quote, tried to intimidate and coerce her into paying cash immediately to avoid going to jail. She says she did not have any bad checks or commit theft and told Sutton to go ahead and take her to jail rather than put up any money. And in addition to those complaints, the records say Sutton was involved in at least five cruiser accidents. He got reprimands or counseling for following too closely, failure to maintain control, failure to yield, and driving too fast for conditions. He's also been disciplined for failing to show up for court cases several times. Now, altogether, there were 26 complaints or investigations involving Sutton, and many of them did not result in discipline. He was also investigated for shooting uh, at two pit bulls, killing one of them, but wasn't punished in either of those cases. Internal Affairs also took no action after several cases where people said Sutton either bullied them or showed an aggressive attitude. The file also doesn't include a 2010 case where he allegedly hit a Macon man, Jimmy Brewster, several times in the head with a flashlight. Brewster suffered head injuries and later filed a lawsuit against Sutton the police department, the city, and others. Sutton remains on administrative leave from the Macon police while they investigate the Kroger case. Police spokeswoman Melanie Hoffman could not say how Sutton's discipline record compared to other officers on the force. She referred those questions to police internal affairs. Captain Jimmy Barbie, the head of that department, and he could not be reached for comment. Frank? Sammy Davis Jr. paid their respects at the place they called his second home. This is the way he would want it. Eating chips and drinking soda outside Kroger, just like Davis did. Every time I come here, he'd be sitting in a little spot over there. I'm not bothering anyone. He'll help you put your groceries up and, you know, we give him a little money. And, you know, mostly he's like eating chips. Eating chips and drinking soda is what he always did. Very respectful, quiet. He would come out here and sit over there and talk and eat. That, that, that was every day. Every day until Friday, a day that would be Davis's last after the 49-year-old was shot three times by Macon police officer Clayton Sutton. Police say Sutton tried to issue a warrant when an altercation led to gunshots. Well, what's going through my head was somebody misunderstood him, and it cost me his life. Davis lived within walking distance with relatives who say they can't understand why police killed the man they called Junebug. Very surprised, you know, because I know he doesn't provoke violence or anything like that.
Officer Sutton is now on administrative leave pending an internal investigation by Macon police, but those who knew Davis say they want answers. All I ask is why, why did the police do it? I just don't understand that why the police have to shoot that man three times. That don't make no sense. So this is really wrong. You know, it's just really sad, you know, for him. That's my main, that's my main concern because he was a good guy. And a friendly face missing from a familiar spot now marked by loss. I just, I turned around, went back home. It don't feel the same. Just coming to Kroger, just watching him, because every time I come straight to Kroger's, I look at him, wave at him. Like, he just, he made everybody day. In Macon, Tom George, 13 WMAZ Eyewitness News.